Hey everyone, Steve Margia here with Class A Surfacing. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions in regards to continuities. Now, I've got several videos about continuities, and they get into it a little bit, but I'm going to talk a bit about it using curves in this case, and uh, get more into the math of things a little bit more, and then also into the analysis of things, and sort of explain things a little bit as to some of the things that you may see. Now, um, as you can see, I've got a couple of splines out in space, separate from one another. So I'm going to just go into curve continuity and I'm going to pick these. I don't want to show needles. Needles are kind of nice. They just show at the very end point the various needles of uh, uh, so you can see how things are parallel or the direction of the, the actual needle and the curve and so on and so forth. See what's going on. Now um, I don't want to see that and I'm just going to simply select OK. You'll notice these readouts here, this analysis is redundant in the screen, so I'm just going to simply select OK and show that. Now, what's interesting about our continuities is that I can have this spline at that endpoint technically have the same slope as this, this spline at that endpoint. So in theory, I can have a gap and it be tangent. Now, is it what we're looking for? No, but all tangency is is, a, is a, you have a slope vector and you have a slope vector. Basically, if I look at the control polygon of this curve here and the control polygon of this curve here, it's if I get, you know what, let me show those. Let me show the poles on that. Show the poles on that. So the tangency that you see here as it's read out is measuring the angle between this line and that line. And currently it's almost 14 degrees. This G0 is measuring that distance. Okay, this curvature is measuring that rate of curvature at this endpoint, as well as the rate of acceleration away from that endpoint for G3. Now, this is where some people get confused. I can have the same G, G1, G2, and G3 without having a G0 condition. So I can have it be tangent. I can have this curve share the same radius at that endpoint, as well as having that acceleration off of that endpoint and have a gap. I can also have the same radius, the G2, and acceleration without having that uh, tangent vector as well. So making sure that you verify your analysis checks out is critical because um, this is looking at it mathematically. Now, we also want to check this with graphical uh, displays as well, graphical analysis, things like, in this case, combs, right? You may want to look at the combs of this as well because this is another big tell. And graphically what you're looking at versus mathematically can be two very different things. You may pick up something mathematically which you won't see visually, but you may see something visually that mathematically it won't pick up. And especially uh, it's very pertinent to when you're using conics, especially a conic between two uh, primary slabs, so for your secondary. Uh, a conic, a true conic surface is only a second order or a third or third order or two degree surface. And mathematically, it's impossible for that conic to be truly curvature to both surfaces. But visually, it may give you what you need for a curvature continuous look. So it's important that you use different tools to verify that what you're getting is what you want. Now, in this case, you can see I've got a gap. And um, I'm going to, what I want to do here is I want to take and use this curve. And I'm going to grab and drag this endpoint. And as you can see, as I move that endpoint, those values change. Now, at one point, if I get this close, you'll notice that G's one value, it's saying it's, saying it's tangent to within a tolerance. It's gone green. I think the tolerance is 0.25. Um, so, if um, you're not cautious, you may actually get a big giant gap here and end up with that. And if I come in here and I start modifying this, you'll notice that the G2 value is starting to shrink. As I get close and close and close, bam, look at that. Well with any well with any tolerance, applicable tolerance for having curvature at that endpoint. So in theory, this curve and this curve have the same slope at that endpoint, as well as having the same curvature at that endpoint. So this is what I mean by verifying. You have to verify truly what you're looking at. They're nowhere near G0. 
Now, as far as tolerance values, depending on who you work for, each styling house is going to have their own set of tolerance criteria. I've been in places that have a tolerance criteria of G0 of a basically 0 0.001 of a mil, a micron. Some places will go up to point, uh, 0 0.005 or 5 microns. I've seen places up to 0 0.01. Now, honestly, uh, when you start getting into tolerances that tight, you can't see those in real life. You can't see a micron. Okay, You just can't. You can't see 10 microns, okay, 0 0.001. You can't see, a, you, can, you can't really even see a tenth of a millimeter, okay? It's, you may be able to feel a tenth of a millimeter, and I don't even think that within, uh, within that range, you, you, like I said, you may be able to feel something at that range, but in order to see it, it has to be like a quarter, maybe a quarter of a mil or an eighth of a millimeter, so 0.125 or 0.13 of a mil before the eye can visibly pick it up. So these people working with these incredibly tight tolerances can sometimes uh, cause problems in the surfaces later on. So, um, uh, you know, we're depending on where you're working at, what CAD system you're working with, and what you're doing. So, you know, some of the older CAD systems use larger tolerances. The newer CAD systems like NX can hire a tighter tolerance. So I typically work with 0 0.01 in NX, and CATIA has a, even a tighter tolerancing scheme there yet for certain functions as well. And um, you know sometimes you got to turn up those tolerances to get things to join or so or whatever. But um, it's you know it's good to to understand what those tolerances are telling you. So if I come in here now and I grab this and I drag this and move this over to this endpoint you'll notice that it is now positional. And I can grab this and I can move this and get this to within whatever tolerance that I want. Angular tolerances for a lot of places, I've seen um, up to half a degree in some places, a uh, quarter of a degree in some places, even down to uh, 0.15 or 0.2 tenths of a degree, right? So it's, again, it's variable. I typically try to get it down to about a tenth of a degree. Um, you really can't see anything below a quarter of a degree when it comes to stuff like this. You may be, again, you may be able to feel it, but seeing it is a whole different story. And I'm talking about real life, not in a CAD system where you can zoom up on it a thousand times. Now, as far as uh, curvature and acceleration, you can see here, I can play with this to get those to go. If I just right mouse click on this, well, actually, I don't want to, I'll just say single segment and increase it. I can now right mouse click on this and say infer G1. I can also go in here and say infer G2 because I have enough control points for here's G0 is the first control point, G1 is the second control point, G2 is the third control point, and G3 is the fourth control point. So if I want to infer G3, I have to increase this, get another control point, and say infer G3. And you'll see everything is now absolutely perfect. So I'm going to talk more about this in more videos. I'm going to get into surfaces, and I'm going to talk about how uh, very tight tolerances are really good in a lot of cases, but in some cases you may want to loosen up those tolerances to, to truly get what you want, especially when you're working on the B side of something and you're trying to do offsets. And, uh, you know, it's going to be an injection molded part, and you just want to offset something. You may loosen up the tolerance a little bit. But on your A class, uh, A side surfaces, yeah, having a relatively tight tolerance is going to be pretty important. Again, you have to work to within the boundaries of whoever you're doing your work for, they whatever they specify. Okay. Um, as far as these tolerances, you know, for me, um, the most important ones are the positional, right? The G0 and uh, the G1. Um, G0, if you don't have good uh, uh, good tolerances there, and if it's not tight enough, you may have little gaps that when it goes to the machine shop, those gaps would cause like, I, and this is something that we talk about all the time at a lot of my clients is the cutter comes up to that, that gap that's not really noticed and all of a sudden it wants to dive into the part. Okay, we've seen tools shatter because you're, they're making a small part like a, uh, what was that one? Uh, one of my clients, they're making a spoiler and it's a thin piece and is just sitting up on blocks and it got to a, a m microscopic hole in the part and it just, the cutter went into the part, it uh, wrecked the part, and it also wrecked the cutter because it drove it into one of the blocks that was supporting the part. So that's why you know, the G0 tolerance, G1 tolerance are very, very critical. Um, G2 and G3 are, again, purely aesthetics. Okay. 
So uh, this is just a quick little chat. I'm going to get in more again later on more into the math, more into how these things uh, really truly work, how you can sort of fudge the math a little bit using a conic to get something that looks curvature continuous but isn't necessarily mathematically curvature continuous. So it's a huge broad subject. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Questions, please feel free to ask. Um, if you like the video, please like it, subscribe to my video, and share. Thanks again.